everybody, welcome back to part 14 this time of the 132 scale Tamiya Mosquito build. This time I want to get the airframe ready for painting. So all the rest of the flying surfaces I want to get done, the flaps. You can see that I've fitted the fin and the rudder, I'll show you how that went together. Uh, I've got one or two other bits and pieces of panelling to do, uh, ready for painting. And I've got the Bombay doors and undercarriage doors to do as well. So really this is the last step before I start to apply some colour to the model. So let's get to work and get all these last uh, bits of the airframe put together. Okay, so I'm going to start off this week by uh, putting the flap assemblies together. And I've decided eventually to have the flaps uh, dropped. We do have the option in the kit. Uh, so I'll get those parts out and we'll uh, get them assembled. You can see here that we've already got the central uh, mountings for the flaps in the back of the nacelle. So uh, as I said we'll get the parts out and we'll uh, get those put together. So the Tamiya in instructions as usual separate the options into two full assemblies. So we've got the flaps as you would build them uh, if they were retracted. I think the difference will be in the bars which go across the two flaps. They're different parts whereas the actual flap pieces themselves are the same whichever way we want to uh, display them. You can see the sprues are getting fairly empty now. Time for a new blade, I think that one's blunt. Seen before on this kit, these sprue gates, which actually overlap the mating surface of the part, and they've obviously got to be removed, otherwise the surfaces won't join together. I'll leave the stubs on here until the uh, parts are joined. Just take the worst of them off and do the cleaning up, final cleaning up afterwards. Okay, just got to be uh, careful with these. There's two sets of locating holes. We obviously need to get the linking bar uh, in the correct position. So that's the uh, port side done.
and just leave those to set for a couple of hours and then we'll just clean up the uh, remaining stubs and join lines and I think I'll probably prime them at that stage just to make sure that uh, they're all nice and clean ready to go on to the rest of the airframe. These hinges go in after we've fitted the flaps so I'm just going to have to leave them off for a while. But uh, whilst I'm waiting for that I'll just clean up this junction between the upper and lower wing halves. It's not something I dealt with earlier on when I put the wings together. <laughs> Obviously once I get the flaps in I'm not going to be able to do anything about this so now is the time. So I'm just going to have to leave these flap assemblies for a while until the glue's dried so whilst I am waiting uh, I'll just move around the aeroplane a little bit. There's a couple of bulges to fit on the underside here. Get those out of the way. Okay, so we've had a bit of time for these to dry. Just give them a clean up. The only part of these flaps that I'm still not happy with are these outside faces. And because the flaps are dropped, you can see this edge here. So I need to do a bit of filling on that. The join hasn't cleaned up exactly as I want it. So I'll just use a little bit of Mr. Surfacer just to close that up. So this is Mr. Surfacer 500. It's the thicker of the various grades of Mr. Surfacer that's available. That's all it needs, just on that edge and let it dry. Clean that up in a while. Okay again, so I'm waiting for the flaps. I wanted to get all the uh, flying surfaces done this week, so the next job is to build the fin and the rudder. Another frame finished with. These are all the uh, crew figures. Obviously I've not used the two figures for the uh, cockpit seated. But I am going to build the one that's standing climbing the boarding ladder. But uh, I'll do that later on in the build, right towards the end I should think.
You notice there that I avoided putting glue next to the trim tab. And that's because the glue can squeeze out and fill the line of the trim tab or the join there. And we want to uh, obviously preserve that little gap so the glue won't seep into that and we get a nice clean join. Trailing edges of flying surfaces are often an area where you will miss a gap sometimes quite difficult to see and it's not until you get the paint on or the primer that uh, you notice them so I like to spend a little bit of extra time just checking around the trailing edges just making sure that they're nice and uh, filled Okay, put the rudder and the fin together and for that I'm just going to glue the fin. And that's because if you put the glue on the tab on the rudder, as you push it in, it will push the glue backwards and out into the join, which you don't want. So that's just a cleaner way of doing that assembly. So it's fixed, but there's no glue to be seen in the in the uh, hinge line there. And it's the same with attaching the fin to the fuselage. So there's uh, no problem with that, it's all gone on fine. I can go back and give the ends of these flaps a clean up now. This is where I put the Mr Surfacer on earlier on. That's dry now so I can sand that down. And that just leaves the Mr Surfacer in the very fine crack that we had in that. So that should paint up all right now. I think this one was a bit worse. Okay, so they're fine. I'm just going to give those a coat of primer now. Whilst I've got the primer out I'll also do the inside of the flaps and around the underside of the wing here. Uh, just so that uh, I can check for any more work that needs to be done on the flap bays. Okay, the flaps have had some primer on now. They're okay, ready to go. But uh, I've just been thinking about the assembly sequence here, or more to the point, the uh, painting sequence. And that's because when we come to put the flaps into place so they just drop in and swing down they lock in with a little hook down here in the mechanism and that puts them at the correct angle the thing that I'm slightly concerned about is the painting sequence when we come to put the uh, grey onto the side of the fuselage here it's going to be very difficult uh, to get a good coverage in there so what I might do is put some medium sea grey on the inside here just to get the coverage that I'm looking for and then fit the flaps afterwards. We also have the mechanism on the inside here which has to be painted silver. So that's another reason I think for probably leaving these off at this stage or at least not gluing them into position. 
the back of the me mechanism is covered by this panel which is just a drop fit there's no magnets or anything with that and that's a pretty good fit so I'm probably going to leave those loose on the model and that just enables you to remove them to see the mechanism inside. I've also done a coat of primer on the inside of the flat bays here just to check that they're ready for paint and they are. done that on both sides. So what I'm decided to do is to leave these flaps loose for the moment. Uh, get a bit further advanced with the painting. I'll get the whole of the underside primed. I'm just looking at the underside and this is going to need a lot of masking up uh, and careful masking up to make sure that I don't get any uh, primer overspray or, or top coat uh, overspray into the uh, wheel bays, the engine bays and the bomb bay. Especially after all the work that's gone into those. The other underside panel that we have are these radiator flaps. And they fit here like that. They're attached with some magnets uh, so I'll fit the magnets now and the metal plates that attract to the magnets and then these parts can also go on. The magnets fit into these little pillars, I suppose they are. And then with the plates and the magnets, the radiator flaps We'll just drop into position like that. I think they're possibly a bit gimmicky. I'm not sure that you need to be able to remove those. All you could see if you do remove them is the rear face of the radiator. So I'm not sure. I don't think they'll ever be coming off once they're fitted. But I will put the back face of the radiators in at this stage, otherwise I will forget them. I'll get these two panels filled in now. The wing's permanently attached, so I don't need to be removing this screw anymore. So uh, we can get those two done. For my version, I just need to remove this moulding from the top of this panel. My next job is to do the uh, bomb bay doors and the gun bay doors here. In my case, because I've got both of the bays open, I will be using just this one piece. I did have a comment, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, maybe last week, when someone just pointed out that often these doors, because they were separate, uh, they did open at different angles, so uh, the suggestion, I suppose, would be to cut the bomb bay doors away from the uh, cannon bay door. 
and just display them a little bit more open one to the other. The difficulty with that is that the hinges uh, in this kit for these doors are pretty well fixed and what you would have to do if you wanted some variation would be just bend those hinges. The risk of that of course is breaking them off. So although it might be a little bit more authentic to have those doors open at different angles, I'm going to leave them as they are and it will also give me the integrity of this part uh, so that it will be just a stronger assembly I think. So I'll forgo that little bit of possible accuracy uh, for the sake of the strength of the model uh, and not risking breaking those hinges off. So with that we'll get the door ready. I think it comes in one piece, I'll have a look in a moment, so we're going to have to cut it down the centre line. Uh, so let's just get these parts out and we'll uh, get them put together. As I thought, the door comes in one part. This is for the eventuality that you wanted to close the Bombay and the Gumbay doors up altogether. Uh, I'm not sure that many people will do that. It just seems a waste of all that lovely detail in the underside of the aircraft. But the options there if that's what you want. I think I pointed out earlier on as well that you can also have just the bomb bay doors open and close up the gun bay. As I said, I'm having mine completely open so I'm going to have to cut that part. These are the Canon uh, ejector chutes. We've also got a couple of bits of photo etch for what looked like uh, some tools. There's uh, a spanner by the look of it there. I'm going to leave those on the fret for the moment. So the first job is to cut the Bombay doors open down the centre line. And to do that you could use a scalpel. That would do the job, but I think it's easier for the scalpel to wander off the line for some reason. I don't know why. It's maybe one of those things that's happened to me once and I've avoided it ever since. But I prefer to use a very fine razor saw like this one. And I just find it easier to keep on line. It's just like uh, scribing really, you could use a scriber as well. But with a couple of passes you can actually deepen the groove in the part and that reduces even further the risk of the tool wandering offline. And the key to this is to do it in several passes, don't try and cut the part in one. This plastic's very very thin so it won't take much to go through it. There'll come a point when the scribe line it's so fine that it will snap off. And then just clean up the edge. Those are the uh, ejector chutes, they're all different sizes, so it should be fairly obvious where they go, I hope it is anyway. I'll, I won't be gluing these just yet. A 
because uh, the interior of the doors is in the interior green and these are going to be an aluminium colour so I'll leave them off and assemble them separately once everything's been painted up but uh, that's the general idea we also have some photo etch to fit into three of these chutes these stainless steel plates just I suppose they're like a splitter they divide the chute into two Okay, so I'll just set those to one side and we'll take a look at the undercarriage doors next because I want to paint all of these uh, doors together. There's also a little bit of photo etch from the uh, Edward Brass set to fit on these as well. I don't know what Edward are thinking of here really. I don't think that those make any difference at all. They just add a flat plate to uh, what is a recess moulding. So uh, I'm not going to bother with those, I think they're a waste of time. The other thing that we get in this etch fret are these plates which also uh, just replicate really what's already moulded. So again I don't understand the point of those. Uh, one thing that I will add is there's a little eyelet that goes onto this position here. I will put those on and actually I think that therefore uh, the retraction mechanism. Uh, I had an interesting comment uh, the other day about the uh, retraction mechanism on the undercarriage doors because at the time when I built the undercarriage bays or the undercarriage legs I wasn't sure what a particular part of that was and uh, the comment that I got which was very helpful uh, pointed out that they were bungees and uh, it was part of the retraction mechanism and I'm pretty sure that this uh, eyelet here that we're going to be fitting uh, is probably related to that bungee mechanism That noise you can hear, uh, you might have just caught it, is a partridge. Not to be confused with the screech that we sometimes hear on the video, which is a pheasant, a male pheasant, but uh, we don't often hear the partridges. There must be one just outside the shed here. Okay, so all those doors are ready now. I'll uh, get them primed up and we'll do a bit of painting on them. Okay, that's the first stage of painting done. So uh, the Bombay doors have had a coat of interior green. 
and a gloss coat uh, with some Tamiya, uh, I think it's X22 clear, it's the gloss clear anyway. And the undercarriage doors, which are these, I've uh, done in Duralumin to match the uh, undercarriage bays. I'd forgotten actually that these were Duralumin, I just imagined that they were green, but obviously when I checked the instructions, they turn out to be the silver colour. So I used the Duralumin. So the next stage is to give these a weathering wash. See, I've just spilt it. Lovely. So, uh, just a pin wash on these. I'm not going to flood them. So just let that dry, it's a bit uh, strong at the moment but it will fade down a bit and when we come to remove the excess with some mineral spirits, white spirit, we can uh, tidy those up a little bit. So just a light pin wash, that obviously needs quite a bit of tidying up, as do my hands. So I'll go around and do the other three undercarriage doors. And uh, I'll leave them overnight to dry actually these, I want to make sure that the enamel wash is completely dry before I remove it. Okay so these uh, parts have all had time to dry now or the enamel wash has had time to dry and I just want to work around now and remove the excess so this cotton bud is very lightly moistened with some mineral spirits it doesn't want to be wet otherwise we'll just remove all the wash which would uh, defeat the object really So just that lightly moistened bud will just remove the worst and we also collect some of the wash on the end of the cotton bud and that works its way into the paint finish just to make the door nice and grimy. remaining wash on the end of the bud there I can use that just to create some streaking effects just down on the doors So you, you can play around with this wash for a while until you get to the point where you're happy with the effect. If you take too much off you can always put a bit more on. So 
So the uh, green areas here, I'll now get a coat of flat varnish. I won't do that with the undercarriage doors. I want them to retain their metallic look. So uh, they just need a little bit of detail painting on them. But the Bombay doors, I'll get a flat coat on those and then we'll do a little bit of dry brushing on them. So I've been uh, dry brushing the interior green uh, parts with XF76, this uh, grey green. Okay, that's enough for the dry brushing. Just pick out some details now. This is Citadel Games Workshop uh, layer paint. This appears to be some sort of pouch leather. I assume it's not called out in the Tamir instructions. But uh, whatever colour it was, I'm pretty sure it wasn't green. We'll uh, add those tools now that I mentioned earlier on. Now we can put the uh, cartridge chutes in. I think they may need some uh, weathering and I'll do that when I come to add the uh, gun staining on the underside of the door. They're a bit too clean at the moment. Yes, they're done, ready to go onto the aeroplane. I've also painted the outside of the doors in the medium sea grey. But as I said, they need to be uh, weathered when I come to do the rest of the underside. Okay, so we're all done. They're all ready to fit onto the aeroplane. Uh, apart from the weathering to the outside surfaces, they're all done and ready to go. I'll uh, check the fit of them now, just before we finish up. 
uh, just to make sure they all go on all right. I've done no reason to suppose that they won't. We've got these really positive hinges that uh, will locate the doors. There's one required at the front and the retraction, second retraction arms at the back of the door there for the bomb door. But uh, I think they look nice. What I'm going to be doing is using these three hinges or four hinges here to locate the door first of all and then I'll add the front and back hinges uh, afterwards. And likewise the undercarriage doors have got two very secure hinges here which were part of the sidewall detail. So uh, they're nice and solid, they'll hold the door in place perfectly aligned. In fact uh, we don't even need to hold those on, the hinges do the job for us. So that's it uh, for this week. I've no time to do any more now. And I've got done everything that I intended to do. So we'll uh, leave it for there and work out what we need to do next on this model. Okay, so that's the airframe more or less complete. We've got the bomb bay doors done, the undercarriage bay doors done. The flaps are assembled, uh, I can't fit them as I explained earlier on in the video because of the painting sequence, uh, but we'll sort that out next time when we come to put the primer coats on and the first coats of top coat paint. I've test fitted all the cowlings, you can see the port engine's got the cowlings test fitted at the moment. They all fit on really nicely so there's not going to be any problem there I don't think. So next time I'm going to be starting the painting process and to do that it's going to take a lot of masking. I think most of the time I'm going to spend next week will be on masking the model up but as I said earlier on in the video with all the work that I've done on the engines and the cockpit and the bomb bay I don't want to be getting any overspray in there at all so I'm going to have to really concentrate on getting the model masked up really well. But hopefully once we've done that, we can get on with the painting. The camouflage scheme for this particular aircraft, HX922, uh, was medium sea grey overall, with a disruptive camouflage of RAF green on the top surfaces as well. So a relatively simple scheme to do, but we've got some other complications to think about. We've got the Montex masks, for the national insignia and the serials and code numbers. We're going to be using those as well. And there's also quite a bit of weathering to do on the airframe uh, for the gun staining, the exhaust staining and other bits of wear and tear that I want to try and reproduce in the model. So hopefully at the end of the next video I've got most of the camouflage scheme applied uh, I'll start on the weathering, I'll have to see how that goes. I might not be able to finish all of it in the next video, but I'll do what I can. So that'll be coming up next time on Friday as a premiere, uh, part 15. Before then though, I want to take a look at these uh, aftermarket sets. These are for the bombs in the kit. I'm not going to be using the Tamiya ones. These are from a company called Model Design and Construction in the UK resin and etch brass so we'll take a close look at those uh, sometime over the weekend i think and i'll probably put one of those together and see how they look compared with the tamiya equivalents so uh, a mini review coming up over the next few days but the next main 
uh, part of the build series, the build playlist, as I said, next Friday, uh, 8 o'clock for the premiere. So hopefully I'll see you then. In the meantime, everybody, look after yourselves, stay safe, and I'll see you in another few days. Bye for now.